Hey, welcome to Bear Mountain today. This is one of our spring chores that we have to do every year is kind of clean up the Hypericum bed. So we're gonna show you what we do and how we do it. It's uh, a little bit rougher than maybe what a lot of people would do, but it's kind of an interesting thing. So let's get at it. A number of years ago, we planted hypericums out here in uh, kind of a, a kind of open field so they could basically kind of naturalize on their own. And uh, it's a mixed variety of them. These were, were hypericums that are um, could be part of a landscape or could, you know, in our case, we're raising them for cuts. And uh, we sell the greens as well as we sell the berries. And the whole thing about this is, is every year the best growth is on, or the best blooms and the best foliage is on the new growth. So we basically come through and we coppice these guys down to about a foot, uh, maybe a little more in height, and then new growth will branch out from that. And what you're looking at here is a row that we, uh, we just finished using our handy dandy DeWalt not that I'm getting any money for this. I'm not advertising it. I'm not a sponsor. But we use this uh, guy because it seems to be, um, it's about probably for us, it's got the best battery life to it. I can go through and, and cut this whole 85 foot row. Um, and these, these Hypericums were uh, three, four foot tall. And I can do this all in one battery charge and still actually have some left on it. So this has been a really handy tool for uh, being portable and away from an electrical outlet or not having to, you know, choke down gas fumes from a two-cycle motor. Uh, this has actually been a really good investment. We've used it also in the high tunnel for taking out things like snapdragons and things like that. And so I make quick work of it. And what we do is when we go through is we'll chop it down in three stages. We'll take it off at like about six to eight inches at a time till we get down to, to the height that we want to be at. And the reason we're doing that is we're doing things a little differently than other people. Other folks would say, okay, now that I got all that stuff cut off, let's haul it off and they'll do whatever to it, burn it or compost it or shred it or what like that. Um, from our perspective, we're treating this area more in a natural way. And what I mean by that is um, there's a lot of nutrients that these plants have accumulated over the course of a season and what's left in their branches and leaves and things of that nature. And so what we're doing is we're leaving that uh, as a mulch around the base of the plants. Now you may say, well, that's kind of crazy because that might you know, harbor diseases or give a home for rodents or things of that nature. We found that over you know, doing this several times that we haven't, you know, we've been blessed maybe, I don't know, but in a general sense, we haven't noticed any problems with the plants themselves. And the reason behind it, the reasoning behind this is this, is if you think about a forest, you go into a forest, you know, every year, whether it's a deciduous forest or a conifer forest, the needles or the leaves drop, or the branches, you know, break off, the dead ones break off and fall to the ground. And they decompose where they're at, and they provide that nutrient base eventually back to the trees and, and that are growing there where the leaves dropped. And this makes total sense from a biology standpoint is these plants as they grow are gonna form their own biologic relationships with the soil and certain bacteria and certain fungi and those things are going to aid the plants. If we return the nutrients that those plants have put into it back to them uh, through the same decomposition process, which is basically sheet composting, um, over time it's going to provide extra minerals and things of that nature that are specific to the plant itself. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to form a mulch around the base of the plant. And in the longer term, that duff will help moderate temperatures uh, when the extremes happen in winter or summer, it's also going to provide um, kind of a moisture barrier in a sense that it's going to slow down the evaporation and it's also going to prevent, you know, heavy rainfalls or things of that nature from kind of having any kind of negative impact on the surface of the soil around the plants. Uh, when they're down like this and there's no foliage on it, you know, rain can get right to the ground. So what we do is after we cut all this stuff, is we just basically take the scraps 
like this, we just twist them up and we just make sure they're around the base of the plant itself. You know, it's nothing really complicated. It's just a quick go back through. We make it around the base of the plant. We use as much of it as we can around it. Some, sometimes there's, you know, it's heavier some years and some spots than others. Try to even it out a bit. And that whole process takes, you know, a very short period of time. And we don't apply fertilizers to these guys. We may um, treat them with like some fermented seawater or, or uh, an FPJ in an early part of the season to get them rocking and rolling. But for the most part, these guys are pretty healthy. They're kind of a native to St. John's wort and they're a relative of that. And so they grow pretty well in the Pacific Northwest. And so far it's been really good. This, this row of 85 feet has just been phenomenal in terms of uh, their output of biomass and, and things of that nature. So the whole point of this is, you know, in nature, no one comes in and cleans up the forest. Well, except maybe a tornado or something of that nature, but for Fire. the most part, <laughs> on a natural basis, um, the residues aren't removed and so they're returned to the soil. So that's the whole concept here. We are going to be doing this uh, with some more of our perennial plants, such as uh, curly willow or dogwoods and things of that nature that we're going to be putting in this year. It's the same idea. As it's a kind of a chop and drop type thing. And uh, using that to build up the fertility around the base of the plants themselves. The other thing that we have noticed, interestingly enough, you know, we're in grass seed country, and just as a, a sidebar here, is as we have been doing this, the weeds in the actual bed itself of the hypericum are disappearing. And the, I mean the grasses or the dandelions. Um, we still have a little bit of bindweed here and there, um, but it too isn't as vigorous as it was. So what we've noticed is, is that we're changing the biology, I think a little bit around the base of these plants and the roots of these plants. And the weeds that would be normally kind of like, you know, recolonizing an area, uh, around here, which are mostly grasses and, and uh, annual weeds and things of that nature, they're starting to leave this whole thing alone. So the more I put this down, the less I have to do. And I'm also found too that in watering, uh, I'm not watering as much as I used to too, because the root systems are going down pretty good and uh, things are staying moister longer. So I think this has been a win all the way around. Anyway, just wanted to show you a possible way of dealing with things, particularly if you're not, you know, trying to keep it a manicured landscape area, it's not that important to you, and you're dealing with kind of a production area, that it's an easy way to deal with it. You don't have to deal with the residue, it returns things back to the soil. You could do this with this, like I said, you could do it with other uh, long-term perennials, woody perennials, things of that nature, eucalyptus, kind of the same idea. Keeping those residues of the plants that it came from as close to the base of the plants that you're growing I think is probably a great alternative for keeping you know that mineral cycling back in and going so So anyway, if you have any comments, be appreciative. Uh, we'll try to get back to you as we can. And I want to thank you guys for watching today. This is just uh, one of the many, many chores that we have to do on the farm this spring. And uh, as we go through things, we'll uh, keep documenting them, sending them out there. If you can get a nugget out of here that helps you, that's great. And thanks again for watching, and y'all have a good day.